Water is rarely white or has no color. Water is rarely empty and has no life. Water in Scotland flows in small bands that are never silent, gives voices to notes you can hear if you lie heart down upon this moist and lovely earth. Water in Scotland falls in fine gossamer across the hills and islands, seeps through the wool of sheep, through the shy coats of deer, drips brown, now coloured, by the palate of this land. Thank you. Today we're in London, launching the Generations Mortley 75-year-old, a unique whisky bottled by Gore McPhail, which has transcended the four generations of the Uckert family. So the cask was filled by John Uckert in November 1939 and has been nurtured and cared for by his, his son, his grandchildren and ultimately bottled by his great-grandchildren after 75 years. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Neil Urquhart, Director of Gordon MacPhail and I'm joined today by members of the third and fourth generation of the Urquhart family. My father Ian, my aunt Rosemary and her daughter Susie, my uncle Michael and my cousins Richard and Stuart. Although we are here in London, let us now transport you to Speyside in the north of Scotland and the home of Gordon and MacPhail. I'm a great whiskey lover, but I don't think you even have to be a whiskey fan to appreciate an event like this. It's like releasing the genie from the bottle. It's, uh, it's an antique that's alive. You can sit on an old chair, you can look at an old painting, but here when you pop the cork of the generation from 1939, you, you can smell, you can taste uh, a different era, and it's a, quite a fantastic whiskey. We're honoured to be joined by the internationally renowned and best-selling Scottish author Alexander McCall Smith. And our first speaker is a man described by the Times as Scotland's leading authority on whisky, author of no fewer than 15 books on the subject. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Charles McLean. Thank you very much, Neil, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First, let me say a little bit more about Gordon and MacPhail, and in particular, the generations of the Urquhart family who have, uh, have owned the business since 1915. To put this historic event in context, if you like. The firm was founded in 1895, and one of the partner's first employees was John Urquhart. He was joined by his son, George, in 1933, when the latter was 14 years old. Together, they developed close relationships with many Speyside distilleries and a profound knowledge of the spirits made at each, placing orders for new make spirit, selecting and filling their own casks, and maturing the whiskey for longer than was usual at the time. The thing that kind of amazes me about that is my grandfather would have been 20 years old when, when it was filled in 1939. To our knowledge, there's been no other whiskey ever matured for 75 years in one cask, which makes it a very rare product. And it's all about trying to get the right cask that can mature whiskey for that length of time. In 1939, obviously in November, we, the, the world was a much different place. We were on the, on the cusp of, a, of the Second World War. And the distilleries would have been a much, a much different um, uh, place than they are today. A distillery would have been run as a farm distillery. So the distillery would have had farm operators, the distillery would have malted its own barley, it would have had its own coopers. At a distillery more, such as Mortlake, there was probably upwards of 40, 50 people working at the distillery, whereas today there may be less than 10. Gordon and MacPhail was established in 1895, and as a result, we have traded in three different centuries. Our philosophy for single malt Scotch whisky has been embraced by the generations of the Urquhart family. Each generation has passed on a lifetime's experience in maturing whisky, guided by the simple principle. The future is shaped by what we do today. Well, today reveals what we did in the past. The third and fourth generations of the Urquhart family still hold dear these values today. On the 17th of November, 1939, my great-grandfather, John Urquhart, gave the instruction 
to fill cask number 2475. On behalf of the Urquhart family, it gives me great pleasure to announce the release of the unique and incredibly rare Generations Mortlach, 75 years old, by Gordon and McPhail. Mortlach Distillery was the first distillery in Dufftown, which is one of the capitals, if you like, of, um, of malt whisky. Uh, it, was, it was first licensed in 1823. There was a famous saying, Rome is, was built on seven hills and Dufftown stands on seven stills. It became very, very popular as a blending malt. It's a very notoriously heavy style of whiskey. Um, it's known locally as the Beast of Dufftown. Very rich, heavy, meaty. The, the, the new make spirit character is described as meaty. It smells like a roasting tin. My father always told me how to drink whiskey and uh, Mortlach was part of that. And of course, Gornoville has very old stocks of Mortlach. And uh, so I kind of know the whiskey. And this is a wonderful example of a very fruity, uh, very lively whisky. Uh, for, for such an age of 75 years old, it's remarkable, I think. The, the Urquhart family has done so much for the whisky trade. Without the Urquhart family and their interest in single malt whisky, there would not be such a thing as single malt today, and the whisky industry would have been much, much more dull. I, I, th I think that in the modern world, there's so many products, so many of the things that we use in our day-to-day -day life, which are, are made in a very distant place, are mass-produced, have very little character. Uh, when you look at uh, whiskey, for example, uh, you see that that's quite the opposite, that this tends to be a product which is very firmly linked to a particular place, or as in the case of uh, Gordon and MacPhail, to a family over the generations. And that's something which I, I find really uh, rather admirable, that there's this family in Scotland uh, that uh, is still doing what they were doing generations uh, ago, doing it in the same community, in the same place uh, as it has been done uh, over, over the ages. And, and that's very, very encouraging and I, I, I rather like that. I think that that uh, has a real feeling of authenticity to it. Working for a fine business is uh, it's not a job you just do for a short period of time. It's your life's work. Um, and you're kind of very proud to be part of the Gomerfield story and hopefully continuing that tradition and legacy and passing it on to the next generation. Even the strongest of trees, when young, is vulnerable to wind and rain. Earth softens, a bolus of roots may wrench itself free of the soil's embrace. A tree may fall for many reasons, just as we may fall in our individual ways. Some of this here has been wet, something to do, we are told, with a trapped jet stream above our corner of northwest Europe. When we look at the sky, we cannot see the wind, only the things that wind does, just as we cannot see friendship if we look into the heart of another, but can feel its effect just as we feel the wind on our faces or the sun. Rescuing the oak, we pushed and shoved and brought it to its feet again, ropes around its juvenile trunk, secured with knots to the neighboring trees, were like the bonds that unite one to another, the tendons of community, the bindings of brotherhood. A tree may be tied in place, upright against the wind, with cord that is the same as that which ties us to our place in the world, that long ago secured our people to the place they inhabited, to that place they loved enough to name.